Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very exciting video in regards to AMC and more specifically in regards to the court date on April 27th. A quick backstory here, I have been very clear, crystal clear, 100% clear, that I don't think even though we got a yes vote today that it's going to hold up in the courts and we need to specifically go over why that is why the allegheny county retirement fund is probably going to win this court day now that's not to say april 27th is going to be the only court day i'm sure there will be one more after that so amc basically could be in limbo until early to mid-summer if I were to estimate, but how a no or an absolute uh, resolution to be that AMC cannot do these initiatives that were quote-unquote passed today could trigger a massive short squeeze. Let's get straight into all of this key information. Join me. We will discuss it. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel in the meantime if you have not already. So, this article breaks it all down for us, guys, and, and, and by the end of it, you're going to be in agreement that AMC is guilty of what they are uh, they are apparently being accused of doing. So, the Allegheny County... Re the Allegheny County Employees Retirement System said in the proposed class action filed on Monday that the company and several of its directors violated state law to, quote, eviscerate the voting power of common stockholders who had not supported issuing new shares. AMC became a meme stock during the COVID-19 pandemic, raising more than $2 billion in 2021 as retail investors piled into its stock and others such as GameStop Corp when short sellers had bet against. AMC last year created preferred shares, which traded on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol APE. The Pennsylvania Pension Fund said in the lawsuit that, create, that, that the creation of the preferred stock was an attempt to circumvent shareholders' will. The company is poised to hold a shareholder vote. And that was today to convert preferred shares to common shares and authorize it to increase its common stock count tenfold. The pension fund asked the Delaware chancery court to declare the preferred shares invalid and ban the holders of the preferred shares from voting experts have told reuters that since there are 1.8 preferred shares for every common share of amc preferred stock voting in favor of the conversion can easily outnumber common stock voting against the authorization for more common stock sales so let's let's think about this in english here let's let's break this down on a uh you know high school early college grade level right break this down you don't even have to know too much about the markets there is an arbitrage trade that was inspired by adam aaron and amc in interior capital because amc agreed to sell interior capital about 225 million ape shares when they did that they already agreed to vote yes for this proposal because why this proposal would benefit interior capital it would benefit amc to be able to increase the float of amc tenfold right as as a business fundamentally yeah this would help amc share price wise maybe not so much so they did this whole deal and cooked the books essentially cooked the vote with the second they made this deal the second they made this deal with interior capital and announced this this vote it was already set in stone it was going to be a yes because Ontario capital owned 225 million ape shares that i mean they agreed to vote yes upon this vote which was about 40 percent of the voting p power they needed to pass this initiative to begin with now think about this ape in this arbitrage trade hedge funds have been buying ape institutions have been buying ape and they have been shorting amc a big reason why you have seen amc short interest go from about 18 and a half to that 19 percent and a half range to about 25 percent 
And the reason why you have seen the option activity go absolutely insane for this Friday has all been down to this arbitrage trade. It's pretty clear. Well, if these hedge funds and institutions are buying ape, they have the votes. They're going to vote yes for this conversion. Does it start to make a little bit of sense to you? The fact that they sold so many shares to Interior Capital, they rigged this vote to be a fail-proof way to get agreement from AMC shareholders to do this proposal. Only a select few entities that are invested in AMC are the ones that are taking this to court because ultimately it does not benefit the shareholders of amc it benefits the shareholders of ape and the business of amc itself basically disregards all investors of amc that have been the reason that amc has remained in business so when allegheny county retirement system or fund whatever you want to call them goes to court april 27th it's going to be pretty clean pretty cut and dry on how amc manipulated this vote by doing this deal with intera capital and then by all means i mean if there's an arbitrage trade here that hedge funds and institutions can make money on they're gonna go ahead and do that they incited this trade to begin with that caused hedge funds and institutions to buy ape to vote yes for this proposal to cause the trade to work hopefully this makes some sense to you it's like this snowball effect that started with the deal with amc and interior capital i think what would be fair is that if you could somehow go back to before this deal with interior capital and say those ape holders can vote anywhere after from the deal with interior capital until now none of those holders of ape have a right to vote i think in that instance this would be shot down quicker than duck hunters in Louisiana. It would be destroyed. Absolutely obliterated. It, it, it would probably get like 10% of the votes, right? 20%, 30%, maybe. But not 80 some percent like we came out with today. So AMC did maliciously take away amc common stockholders voting power. That is it with 100 percent certainty. Now Courts can be tricky. What do they say about the actual vote? Maybe, maybe they do entertain Allegheny County Pension Fund and they do say, yeah, you're going to have to hold another vote. And um, essentially the eight shareholders cannot count, right? In that case, the vote does not happen. Or maybe the courts just say, yeah, um, this ain't going to be able to happen. This, this, this goes uh, against state laws and this is not going to happen in that case comes back as a no nothing happens ultimately because nothing will happen at least until april 27th and then at that point you're gonna get a lot of shorts caught offside and have to cover on those short positions and ultimately with the options as well there's been a lot of directionally short options placed on amc you can see that very prevalent in the option activity we are seeing up until this friday that's also going to get kicked down kick the can down the line so to say and that can also cause uh, a bullish reaction within amc as well so the way that I look at this, there's really no chance this holds up in a court the way that this vote happened. Odds are you could see another vote which ape shares are not able to be counted. Or like I said earlier, maybe from the point this deal was announced with Interior Capital, maybe those holders previously could be allowed to vote. But I don't think there is a chance in hell this holds up the way that it is. And that does means some upside from here some pretty substantial upside in my personal opinion from april uh, from now until even april 27th because a lot of people are going to start to say what are the chances that this vote holds true to where it is now right kind of like the same reason banks have been getting destroyed and they ultimately bounce pretty hard today is you know what are the chances that this spreads to other banks right and and, and people had deemed there was a pretty good chance first republic uh western alliance right pacific uh bank corp getting destroyed they thought it was a pretty good chance now they're like maybe it won't maybe, maybe you know it won't spread to these other banks as much as as we thought boom 
you start to get some pretty big bounces. Same thing is likely with AMC. Now, after April 27th, I'm sure, let's be real here, it's probably not going to get resolved April 27th. It's probably going to be early to mid-summer by the time this is ultimately ruled on and, and finalized. That could mean a lot of uncertainty, which could bring a lot of upside to AMC from now until then. And I think it's going to get more and more likely uh, from investor standpoints that this is not going to go through. And you will have to see either a lot more bullish directional hedging or, uh, you know, you're, you're just going to see shorts ultimately cover on those short positions. But from now until then, like I said a couple times here in this video, I do think there can and will be a pretty substantial uh, bound. So that is really what I wanted to express to you guys here in this video, exactly what they are going to court on and just, just how common sense, how, you know, no brainer, like this ultimately is that it's not going to hold true the way that it is uh been voted on here today now if you take a look at the live short interest of free flow looks like about 24 percent of the flow is currently sold short 123.32 million shares uh that are currently sold short cost of our average 258.1 percent cost of our max 286 and a half percent cost of our minimum 38.61 percent interactive brokers has a cost of our rate that is going up today at about 105 percent with about 1,000 shares currently available uh to be traded and i want to point out the cost of our rates because even after today uh you should have seen the cost bar rates fall off a cliff you should not see 250 300% cost bar rates, uh, given that, hey, if this was free and clear going to happen, there's not going to be that much volatility, right? It, it, we're going to get massively diluted. That's not the case. You're seeing cost bar rates actually going up, especially with interactive brokers, the live numbers that we're seeing right here going from 100% to 105% today. I know it's not a huge jump, but it's definitely not a fall. So I do think that does show you, one, there's going to be a lot of volatility from now until then. And this story is far from over guys so that is going to do it for this video uh as, as as really as far as where amc could go uh and, and this is not going to do it for this video because i do want to talk about where amc could go over the next you know couple of days and and couple of weeks and all that uh you're basically at this level right this down trending line and it looks like we're slightly holding above this in after hours uh we are sitting at four dollars 65 cents per share so we are holding this long-term down trending line as support that is a very positive thing and we should see a bounce definitely above five dollars per share throughout the rest of this week at the bare minimum in my personal opinion at the higher end extent you could break above six dollars per share again it just depends like i said in the last video how analysts start to take this if they start to say uh if they start to think that this court date could affect things right and i think further on we get then you're probably going to see more people switching their opinions and that can lead to a lot more upside guys so that is going to do it for this video hit the like button subscribe to this channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one